Welcome to ProFrame 2015 training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a corner sample order and how to print your labels and anything else that goes with that. So let's get started. I'm just going to go into Create, Edit Orders. I'm going to select New. And I'm just going to select the customer that I'm going to uh, create this order for. Of course, it would be a work order. And it's indicating that it does have currently open work orders, but uh, because this is a corner sample order, I don't want to mix it with something else. So I'm just going to answer no so that it will create a brand new work order. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click my terms and I'm going to drop down and select corner samples uh, terms. Now what's important here is not necessarily the description corner samples. What's important is that 008. That's actually a built-in code that's designed for corner samples only. So once I've selected that, I can, uh, you know, put it on a route if I wanted to, uh, and so forth. Let me go ahead and do that. Since this is uh, Wednesday, we'll put it on Thursday's route. Then I'm just going to drop down and select Add Line Item. Now. I know that my molding products are, you know, start with a W. I only have a few, but what I would do is select the molding product and I would just uh, select it. When I get here, I would change it, that chop to a length and I would leave it set at one and I would put 0.99 here, which will zero out the dollar amount. If you're not charging them for it, then just enter dot nine nine as a discount. Drop down and then enter your next item. And we'll do this one. Then I'm just entering, changing that to link. One point nine nine. Next one. Okay, I'm just kind of moving through here, changing that to length, and then 0.99. Okay. And that's enough to show you. So these are basically corner samples. It's We're not charging for it. So I'm just going to apply, and we're going to save all. And of course, I could print this uh, if I wanted to. Uh, normally, let me show you why I probably wouldn't necessarily print this as a work order. Now, you could uh, if you wanted to, but I'm going to show you a report. I'm going to go ahead and go through this. But I'm going to show you why I may not necessarily need to print a work order for this, okay? I'm going to come out and go to reports and drop down to work orders and select open corner samples. Now I'm going to change my date so I can be sure to pick up everything that's out there. I could. Right now it's defaulted for just work orders, but you could turn on back orders if you wanted to. And so I'm just going to build from there. And what the program's doing is generating me a report that I can print out that's going to have all my corner samples on it. And in fact, it's going to be sorted by item number. So as you can see, these are two different uh, order numbers here, that 143 and that 145. They're two totally different customers. But they're all on the same uh, report, which makes it easy for your, uh, you know, for someone in the warehouse or out in the shop to be able to uh, cut 
all these corner samples based off of just a single sheet or just a couple of sheets of paper. And so they know what the work order number is. And so once this done, once this is done, then uh, the user can, uh, you know, turn this sheet back in and it can be used to actually confirm the orders. So that's why you may not necessarily need to print a work order for each one of these corner samples. Now I'm going to jot down, well I've only got two out there, it's 143 and 145 is the only two orders out there. As you can see, I mean if I sorted it here, uh, Well, actually, it's still splitting it up because it's it's got it segregated by item number, actually. Okay, so I've, I've printed this out. I've cut my corner samples. Now I can uh, easily go at this point and print uh, corner sample labels uh, for that particular orders. So I'm going to drop down and select print order item labels. Now this is not necessarily called corner samples, but that's essentially what it is. It's print order item labels because it basically works for anything because all it's wanting is those order numbers. Okay. So I'm just entering the I'm just entering those two order numbers. Thought I had a 45, I did. Maybe I didn't enter it right. Okay, so there's 143 in there. So there's two on that one and three on that one. And so uh, here I'm telling the program to go ahead and print the order number, the work order number on the labels. So this is designed for Avery uh, laser printer uh, labels, Avery 8167. It's a half inch by one and three quarter inch uh, wide. So I build that and as you can see, it's gonna print your name, your company name here, and there's the item number, and that's the actual order number. So these are your your corner sample labels that you can print and uh, send uh, with these orders. Okay, so there's two for that customer, for that order, and then there's three for the 145A, okay? So that's essentially your corner samples, but this program can print more than just corner. I mean, they can, it can print more than just labels for corner samples. I mean, just molding products. It could print matte products. It could print anything, any line items that's on these two orders would print here. That's the reason it's called uh, item label, labels rather than just uh, corner sample. So that's basically it. Now when I'm ready to confirm if I if I printed the work order tickets out then yeah they can turn those back in but if they just turn back in that report then I can actually go and confirm these and while I'm doing this let me show you how you can confirm orders in a batch type format. As you can see here, I've got the 143 here and the 145. So I know these are corner samples. There's not gonna re really be any changes to those orders. So you can see how I've got that uh, corner sample report that's turned back into me and how simple and easy it would be to go and confirm those orders that they're ready to be shipped out and then uh, be able to just easily confirm those two and then save all. And uh, let me kind of go through that. And then we're going to print. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that because we're not going to be able to see it. I'm going to just show you that it, now it's going to print what looks like a confirmed order, but it's, it's really the chops. I mean, it's the corner samples. So it's ready. You print these out, put them with the with the uh, samples for the customer, and there's your corner samples. And that's basically how that works. Uh, I want to go ahead and go through the motions of printing this one, so it'll mark them as being printed. 
So that kind of covered the corner samples as well as uh, understanding what this confirm orders batch was, which essentially allows you to just, if there's no modifications that, that's required on individual work orders, this is an easy and quick way to confirm orders by just being able to click, you know, these things like that. But if you've got a work order that's come from the shop and for this Eagle Arts, for example, and you've got to make modifications to it because maybe you didn't have everything, then you can't use this feature because uh, you wouldn't want to do it that way because you want to be able to modify and I'm going to uh, quit without saving. You're going to have to do the single confirm so that you can modify the line, uh, line items during that confirmation. See, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you're shipping them too. Well, in this case, you know, ordinarily you would be reducing it, but for this d demonstration, let's say that they called back and we didn't quite get it on there quite right. So we're just going to change our ship quantity. And then we're going to apply this. So that would be the reason why. Uh, let me just try another one so it makes better sense. That doesn't make very much sense there. Let's say you only, they ordered two, but you only had one. So you're only shipping them one. So you need you have to change that quantity. And because we've got to change that quantity, that's why we wouldn't want to be able to uh, confirm this one in the batch confirmation uh, program because it's not going to allow you to change the, the individual line items during the posting process. Okay, so that covers uh, corner samples. Thanks for watching.